But as I was saying, when you have get into a, a, a doing your hometown, you immerse yourself and do an advanced scouting, and you really kind of get to know everybody in town <laughs> probably months in advance before we do our hometown shows. Mm -hmm. Brian, there is a lot going on here in Mount Pleasant. Their downtown has kind of undergone a renaissance in the last 10 years, and there is a real hometown spirit here. And speaking of spirit, there is one spot in town that is all about the spirits. You spend enough time in here, you, you notice a few things that don't really make sense. From the outside, it's pretty obvious. The barbed wire fence and the guard tower are telltale signs of time that keeps dragging on. But inside the old prison in Mount Pleasant, everything is not what it appears to be. I mean, the first thing you see when you open the doors are the jail cells, so you just, eventually you get used to it, but it's always still something, you, the first thing you notice every time you walk in. Sebastian Correa is plenty used to it now. His main office is the D-dorm, but instead of prison beds, it's stills and barrels. The prison closed for good in 2011 and became Southern Grace Distillery in 2016. And now every old building is full of spirits. A fair number of the people who were here were here for bootlegging. The ones that are still here, how do you think they feel? Ben Mabry doesn't need to guess how those prisoners may feel. They tend to show him. I won't have to tell you when you hear it. You'll know especially if they start walking down here. He says there's a spirit named Lizzie who tends to giggle. You want to play, Lizzie? <laughs> Joe, who's in solitary confinement. Way to go, Joe. Walk by, set it up. Oh, there you go. Someone near the stills. They have pictures and recordings from all over the prison. And now, so do we. In a heartbeat. So you've had many people. We got them now. This is the B block and the older prison built in 1929. There were hundreds of men in here at one point, and one or more may still be. All right, Donovan, I got a flashlight in here for you, buddy. These ladies, are... okay. The flashlight was off and it happened so fast, it took us a second to realize it turned on. Come on, buddy, a little bit more all the way. But then it happened again. Use your energy. And again, every time Ben asked. He says, that's Donovan. And then there's Joe. Joe. He's in this cell. Don't mess with me, buddy. Turn it on. If you're going to turn it on, you got to turn it on all the way. You turn it on all the way, I'll open the door back up so you can get out. But you got to turn it on all the way. And yes. Turn it on bright, and I'll open your door back up. It lit up again. But you got to turn it on all the way. So in spite of appearances. You might be able to get in, but you won't be able to get out. All are welcome to come for the spirit of their choice. That flashlight was absolutely crazy. It kept on turning on every time Ben would ask a spirit. So, but Brian, they do have ghost tours there. So if you're brave enough, you can go on a ghost tour or you can just go for the bourbon. <laughs> Oh, sure. It sounds like, why not do both? It'd be a great Friday night to go for the bourbon and the ghost stories. I love it. And it gives me a Shawshank Redemption type of feel to it. I love it. All yes. right, Maureen, Maureen, good start to the to the shows here and the stories we'll see here in just a little bit. Morgan, um, I don't think I've ever seen a place with a distillery in a, in, in, in a prison. That's got to be a new one. That is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen a story that's actually physically giving me goosebumps when the flashlight went off. Yeah, the hairs on my arm definitely raised. That was pretty impressive, Maureen. She's got guts going out there.